Okay, so in this last video, I'm going to show you how to take the photo that we had just done a little uh, edit to, and I'm going to show you how to kind of take it into this and uh, kind of mask it out and do an effect for the uh, black and white, and now to throw some text on and do some uh, some more layer effects to that. Still pretty basic stuff, but I feel like after this, you should be pretty good. You should be pretty good and ready to go in Affinity. So we use the uh, history layer to uh, just go all the way back. And basically, uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to mask her out. And then we're going to put an adjustment layer over top of that, which is going to be the black and white. So what we want to do is go into our selection persona. Then uh, I was using the smart selection tool. And you're just going to want to start going over and selecting her. And there's two, there's a couple things to note down here is the width of your brush and you have add and subtract. So let's kind of go in here. Let me go in. I'm sure I'll have to use subtract in a second. So okay right there right there i got a little out of it so we're going to go to subtract and we're going to kind of draw oops and that subtracted too much so we got to go back to add and we're going to go back and forth with this a little bit uh, i might fast forward this here because it does get a little time consuming sometimes going back and forth uh, actually this one does seem to be going pretty good. Let's see if we can just get the dress here. Okay, not bad. Now, after we have all this selected, uh, we are going to refine this mask. And that's where we're going to get some more detail out of the hair and everything. Uh, if you can see here, this little light, we're going to go back to subtract. And we're going to get rid of that little light. And we're just going to kind of look here. And I guess subtract up in here a little bit. Uh, like I said, we're going to go through and refine this. And let's just get the legs here. Oops. Okay, so now that we have the basic selection, we're going to click the bottom one here, which is refine selection. Okay, so now that we're in refined selection, basically it's putting a mask over our selection. And what we can do is we can go into places that see like right here there was a little miss. So we can just go over that and it's going to refine it and see how that like got it right away. It knew what we were trying to detect and it took care of it. So the fingers are going to be a little different. Uh, we, we could try to do that. Let's go ahead and see if it if it works okay actually not too bad it, it did work let's uh go over here and do it to the thumb okay not bad but it didn't quite get it as sharp as we want so what we want to do here is the adjustment uh if we want if we go foreground we're basically going to be doing what it thinks is the foreground which is going to be the hand and if we go background it's going to be like the sky and stuff so let's go on foreground and we're going to kind of go over that now it knows like that's part of the foreground that we're trying to get so it has more information from us as to what we're trying to select and refine Okay, so there we go. Really nice. Doing a really good job here. Let's go ahead. Let's switch to background here. And we're going to kind of go in and tell it we're trying to get a little more background. But at the same time, let's go in with some smaller brushes and now with foreground and try to get a little bit more of that hair. Hair is definitely tricky. But, 
You know, it's getting it. You just got to take your time with hair. So I think we got a pretty good selection here. Of course, that hair for sure, we can go in and take some more time. Uh, and, you know, feel free when you're editing, take some more time. Because this is a tutorial, uh, I think we're looking good enough. And when it looks like we're good, then what we're going to want to do is make sure we hit the check mark there. And that's going to take all our final things into consideration. So now uh, we want to make a adjustment layer and uh, black and white is right on top. Actually, let me take that back before we click that uh, while we're in the selection. Uh, we want to go down here. We want to go to invert selection because we want the back to be what is masked out. So now that that's inverted, now I want to hit black and white. And um, as you can see, it made an adjustment layer that is masked because we had the selection. So, and deselect. And as you can see, uh, we do have some color adjustments we can play with there. I think this looks fine. You can tighten your picture up based on uh, what you're doing. And let's go ahead and get into the text by going back to the draw, or I'm sorry, the photo persona. And writing out piece. Now, this is already a nice font because uh, I had already been in here, but again, you know, and we can go through some different fonts and choose something we like. We can always change the color in here or uh, wherever. Okay, let's go back to the layers and let's go down to the shapes and add a heart. Okay, and now let's go to color. Now we want that heart to be the same color. So I'm gonna take the eyedropper tool and I'm gonna drag it off that and select, well, let me do that again. Okay, and select that color. Now when I tap that color, it will turn into that color. And let's just kind of move it into place here. Now we're gonna go back here and we're gonna make a folder for both these. That way we can apply the layer effect just to one thing and it will apply it to both. And we're gonna go with an outer shadow here and I'm just gonna pull it out instead of using a lot of the things. And we're gonna make this maybe a reddish. And we can go back now because it's in a group, we can kind of move it around. And resize it a little bit. And uh, one last thing I wanna show you is this up here is the tilt. Now, if you hold your a finger on the thing, that's gonna tilt it like you're holding shift. But let's kind of make it a little, just a little off access. And I think this is a pretty good beginner's guide. And if you've gotten this far and you can do a photo like this, I definitely think you're on the right path. And I hope you guys uh, join one of my other classes. I'm going to keep going more into depth into this. This is a very powerful app. It does rival Photoshop. You'd be surprised what you can do with this. And uh, I don't think it's a total Photoshop killer by any means, but on the iPad, definitely. It's, it's insane that you can do this level of editing on an iPad. So uh, definitely, I hope you guys join me next time. And until then, I'll see you guys around.